I found a stat so good that I've been thinking about it ever since. After 11 test matches, 37% of Kyle Mayer's runs come from one game, and 35% of his career wickets also come from another game. I absolutely love every single part of this, and I don't know if this has ever happened before. This is the last knot. My dad told me to say this. And I love this tweet because it's also true. And weirdly, the West Indies have had the most players ever scoring 200 runs in one test and taking a five wicket haul in another. Damn! Statistician Gary Morden tells me that the list includes Frank Worrell, and Dennis Atkinson, and Basil Butcher, Gary Sobers, Jimmy Adams, Carl Hooper, Chris Gale, Jason Holder, and Craig Brathwaite. And you'll note there's a few batters there who've just chipped in with a five for over time. But even within that, this is a very large list. No other country has more than seven occurrences of this. That's Australia. England have five. No one else has more than three. And of course, the list of the players that I just said, there's some incredible all-round talent there. Worrell, Sobers, Atkinson, and Holder. And even if you just look at the batters, you know, Jimmy Adams, Hooper, Gale, and Brathwaite, they're all amongst the top West Indian run scorers of all time. And Kyle Mays didn't play first-class cricket in 2019. And in 2022, at the age of 29, he joins this list. It doesn't make sense. And if we're being honest, almost nothing about Carl Mayer's career makes any sense. It's been a magical mystery to us so far. He must live in constant fear that someone's going to come and wake him up. Let's start with the fun bit. Like, Carl Mayer's was an opening bowler when he was younger in first class cricket. That might sound weird because chances are if you heard of him, it was because he did this. Let's try and tick it all off. He made a double century on debut and was the first player to do that. And he did it in a fourth innings chase. Again, that's not really a thing. And it was a 395 run chase in Asia, and West Indies won the test match. The entire thing was so weird and magnificent. From his first class debut in 2015 until the end of 2019, Mayers played 22 matches. He made his debut batting at number eight for the Windward Islands when he was playing as an opening bowler. Not even for his native Barbados because he just wasn't in vogue there at the time. Then after not playing any first class cricket in 2019, in 2020 he goes to Barbados and he smashes the ball everywhere that year. Oh, and in the middle of all this, he was the MVP for the Norwegian Premier League. He was a number eight who couldn't make his local first class team, but plays in random Northern European leagues. It's not the kind of player you expect to go on and make a match winning double hundred on debut. Especially considering that there was nothing in his record that suggested he was anything more than a bowler who could hold the bat a little bit. He was bowling around 20 overs a game, which is quite a bit of work for a domestic bowler. It's not quite a full-time bowler, but certainly much more than part-time, and he averaged 22 in this period. And then, of course, when he did the whole breaking the record thing against Bangladesh, everyone starts thinking of him as a batter. Because you can't make 200 in the fourth innings of a test match and not be a batter, right? Except in the 10 tests since then, he's gone back to averaging 23. Even though for much of that time, he was very much in the side as a batter who just bowled a couple of overs. But of course now, it's his bowling that we're talking about because of what he did to England. Twice in this match against England, he destroyed the ball. Once with a five over spell of two for none, and then a five wicket second innings hole to seal the game. And what is magnificent about Mayers taking all these wickets against England is that we don't have bowlers like him in test cricket anymore. He's a short guy who, who wobbles the ball around a little bit at a very medium pace. That sort of part-time bowler doesn't exist in, anymore. In fact, part-time seam bowlers in test cricket don't really appear much anymore. You could argue, but part-timers in general don't. Most people in the game believe this is because we now have so many net bowlers and throwdown specialists, so batters no longer work on their second skills. It could also be that bowling teams rest and rotate their bowlers much better, so unless something goes terribly wrong, the part-timers aren't that necessary. And when they are, it's almost exclusively spinners, right? And cricket was not always this way. Back in the 90s, almost every team had a fourth or fifth seamer who was a batter who liked to get through a few overs. Nathan Assel bowled a lot of overs for New Zealand. And they also had Craig McMillan, who had the aggression of a quick and the pace of a slow. Roger Tews wobbled a few around as well. Chandika Hathrasinghe was a medium pace of wobbler. And Sri Lanka had two less likely other medium paces in Asanka Gurusinghe and Arjuna Ronatunga. Australia had Greg Blewett's skiddy stuff and also Ricky Ponting's occasional outswingers. Steve Waugh started as a genuine all-rounder and probably morphed into more of this kind of bowler as well. Phil Simmons is currently Kyle Mays' coach, but he used to be a deadly accurate medium pacer. India had Surav Ganguly's eager swing bowling, and England had Graham Gooch's earnest mediums and Mark Butcher's slow big swingers. And it wasn't like any of this lot I just mentioned were dominating cricket. 
Astle leads them with 36 test wickets. Twos and Ponting only took three each. But it was very common in those days when the ball was doing something off the surface or swinging around to throw it to a medium pacer to try and nibble out a wicket. That's just not how modern cricket works, right? If the ball is swinging, why on earth would you throw it to a slow seamer who doesn't do the job full time? So part-time is just aren't as important. And if they are, as I said, it's generally more spin. But Coach Phil Simmons said before this game that Myers was partly back in the side for his bowling. In fact, his early bowling. And when you watch him, he delivers his balls at between a speed of 116 and 124 kilometers per hour. That is exceptionally slow. And while he nips the ball around a little bit, he wasn't getting massive movement. Certainly not more than Chris Wokes or Jaden Seals, who both bowl far quicker than he does. Nor Jason Holder, who is about the same speed, maybe slightly quicker than him, but a foot taller. I mean, when you look at his bowling, Mayers has no elite skills. But he does hit a good length a lot, and clearly he's very clever, which is something that many of those 90s medium paces I mentioned before also had going for them. In fact, after his double hundred, one of the reasons he was kept in the team is because his bowling was genuinely quite important for the West Indies. Despite the fact that I don't think the West Indies really thought that when they first brought him in. But even having said that, coming into this test, he had 13 wickets from 11 matches, and six of them were in a single game against South Africa. And when you have a look at the way he's being used, he's certainly being used like a part-timer, only when the conditions suit him often barely bowling at all. Usually they bring him on really early. In this game, he bowled the 9th and 10th overs of each innings. That's very early for his kind of bowler. And it worked. Twice. And it, the whole thing is just so unlikely. So let me just sum all this up. Kyle Mayers was a medium-paced opening bowler for Windward Islands who could bat a little bit. He was so out of favour that in his mid-20s, the Norwegian Premier League was his best option. In 2020, he suddenly burns up first-class cricket with a bat only, gets a series to show what he can do in Bangladesh, makes a match-winning double hundred on debut, then doesn't make any runs after that. But after being dropped from the side, he comes back in, and in his first match, he wins the game with the ball, while taking Joe Root's wicket twice. Oh, I'm missing something. He's also now in the IPL as well. That with a career batting average of 18 and a bowling average of 34. And in 2018 and 2019, he didn't play one major T20 game, with all due respect to the Norwegian Premier League. This has been one of the most spectacularly weird careers that I've ever seen any cricketer have. It's the kind of career that used to happen in the old days of cricket when everything was a bit more amateur. And it tells you two things. There is still a lot of talent in the West Indies, but often it's just underdeveloped and not looked after. And also the Kyle Mayers must be one hell of an adapter. I half expect him to play his first IPL game as a specialist keeper. I mean, he's won two tests, one with the bat and one with the ball. And three years ago, he was out of professional cricket. For many years, when you looked at Kyle Mayers, you were wondering, what could he do? Now it's like, what can't he do? Oh, and I said he got Joe Root out twice before. Root, who is unquestionably one of the greatest batters of his era, someone who has been in pro cricket since he was a boy. Everyone knows who Joe Root is. Last year, it looked like he was going to make the most calendar runs ever in a test year before he ran into Australia. Oh, and of course, he is the current England test captain. Although, with Mayers dismissing Root twice and winning this test for the West Indies, it's a chance that Mayers might actually dismiss Root a third time from his job in charge. Kyle Mayers is the most unlikely England captain killer ever. But he was also the most unlikely everything else as well. 